Okay, we left off last time with our five degree of freedom model implemented in MATLAB such that we can run forward dynamics simulations in it. Um, if I go back to my model function here, remember we have these applied forces. Um, Fx1 is my horizontal ground reaction force at the foot, and Fy1 is my vertical ground reaction force at the foot. Um, tau1 is my hip joint moment, and tau2 is my knee joint moment. Um, these things are all set to zero right now. Um, the only force applied to the model is gravity. And so when I run my model, it just falls down under the influence of gravity. Um, when the foot hits the ground, this green line here, um, notice it doesn't stop or nothing happens to it. That's because those ground reaction forces are set to zero. And uh, notice that throughout that uh, model motion, none of the joints were moving. The hip joint wasn't moving. The knee joint wasn't moving. Um, that's because these joint moments are set to zero. Um, so we need to define the mechanics of these applied forces here to make our model um, a little bit more realistic and to let us uh, simulate uh, motions, things like jumping and standing and, and walking and things like that. Um, let's deal with the joint moments first, and we will deal with the ground reaction forces in a, in a later class. Um, the joint moments will be dealt with first because they relate to something that we've already done um, models of muscle forces. Remember in uh, homework number one, we defined this uh, hill-based muscle model here to um, input an excitation time series to a muscle and as a result compute a force uh, produced by a muscle. Um, that is what we will do here in our um, larger scale musculoskeletal model here to determine the values of these joint moments here. Um, we don't want to specify just arbitrary values for these moments like 5 or negative 22 or whatever. Um, instead, we want these moments at these joints to be produced by the forces in muscles in the model. And specifically, we're going to have uh, two muscles in our model here. We're going to have a glutei muscle that um, produces a moment at the hip joint. And we're going to have a vasti muscle that produces a moment at the knee joint. Um, how we will do that is we will take our model's uh, differential equations of motion here in our model function. And we will add in here, in this space in here, um, these differential equations for muscle activation and muscle contraction. Um, remember one thing that we computed along the way here when we were um, determining the, the uh, rates at which the state variables were changing for this uh, muscle model was the force here in the SEC. And that SEC force, for example, the SEC force in my hip muscle, let's just call it FSEC1 for the, the hip muscle there, if I take that times that muscle's moment arm, R1, to the hip joint, um, that will be my moment produced at the hip joint by that hip joint muscle. And similarly here, for my knee joint, if I take that knee muscle force that I'll compute in here somewhere with my hill muscle model, and take that muscle force times its moment arm to the knee joint there, then that can be my uh, moment at the knee joint produced by that muscle force. Okay, a uh, few details we need to take care of before we can get into implementing this muscle model here as a, an actuator in my uh, musculoskeletal model here. Um, I need to define my muscle lengths and I need to define my muscle moment arms. Okay. Muscle length here will be L1, muscle length here L2, and moment arm R1 and R2. Um, again, we're going to have two muscles here in our model. Um, muscle 1 is going to be a glutei muscle, a hip extensor. And muscle 2 is going to be a, a vasti muscle, a knee extensor. Now, recall here, in our muscle model, we defined two inputs to that model, a muscle excitation and a muscle length. Um, in our larger scale musculoskeletal model here, 
the muscle excitation is still going to be something that we, the user, specify. Um, but the muscle length, this can no longer be something that we, the user, specify. Um, instead, the muscle length needs to be a function of the angles of the joints spanned by those muscles. Um, in particular, the length of the glutei muscle, which spans the hip joint, needs to be a function of the angle of the hip joint, Q4, and the length of the vasti muscle, which spans the knee joint, needs to be a function of Q5, the angle of the knee joint in our model. And the uh, functions for these moment arms will be similar, conceptually similar. We'll get into those a little bit later. Okay, why is this necessarily the case? Why can we no longer just specify arbitrary muscle lengths? Why do we need to define our muscle lengths as functions of joint angles? Um, this is because muscle lengths are functions of joint angles. And to demonstrate that to you, I'm going to use my uh, OpenSim software to give you a visual example of this. Um, OpenSim is, is great software to have on your computer for musculoskeletal modeling. Some of you, I know, have it already. Um, if you don't already have OpenSim installed on your computer, you can go to um, opensim.stanford.edu and click on Download. And under Download Links for the latest version, 4.1, it'll have a, a Windows installer or a Mac installer, whichever one you need. So go ahead and install uh, OpenSim if you haven't already. And I will open it up here. And let's load in a, a full body model to demonstrate this. And this muscle has a lot of muscles, or sorry, this model has a lot of muscles and it's, it's lower limbs there. Um, I'm going to hide all of them. I'm also going to hide the uh, markers on the model. We don't need to see those. And let's just display the two muscles that our model is going to have. It's going to have a glute max. There's GL max 2 there, the middle uh, kind of center strand a glute max in this model and it'll have a vasti muscle and we'll use uh, vastus lateralis to represent that okay let's move our right arm out of the way so we can see things easier uh, let's view it from the side and zoom in here OpenSim is great for a lot of things in musculoskeletal modeling. One thing it's really nice for is, is visualizing models and visualizing uh, simulation results. So here are these two red strands are the muscles that I displayed there. Um, the upper one is the uh, glutei muscle, which is a hip extensor, um, and it's behind the hip there. And then vasti here, the lower one, is a knee extensor. It's on the front of the knee here. Now, a nice thing you can do here with OpenSim is change the angles of these joints and view what effect this has on the kinematics of your muscles. We call this muscle skeleton kinematic coupling, or the relationship between the kinematics of the joints and the kinematics of the muscles spanned by those joints here. Um, so if I look at my knee here and at my vasti muscle crossing that knee, as I change the knee flexion angle, from full extension into deeper and deeper flexion, you can see that the length of that muscle is changing and generally getting longer as I flex the knee deeper and deeper. And by, by longer here, I mean the distance along this red path between the origin of the muscle and the insertion of the muscle on the other end is uh, increasing. The length of that path is increasing as I flex the knee there deeper and deeper. And similarly, as I start extending the knee, that length gets shorter and shorter into full extension there. Now at the hip we can see a similar thing. As I flex the hip, that stretches the glutei, makes it longer and longer. And then as I extend the hip in the other direction, that makes the glutei shorter and shorter. So my lengths of my muscles as inputs to my hill-based muscle models for these uh, two muscles here can't just be arbitrary numerical values that I specify, or they can't just be the uh, optimal uh, CC length plus the unloaded SEC length or some function of those things. Um, they have to specifically be functions of the angles 
joint angles spanned by those muscles. That's how we determine uh, muscle lengths in a real human body, to at least to some extent, and also in musculoskeletal models, how we need to uh, define the lengths of our muscles when we're dealing with uh, muscles that cross uh, the joints of a model. Now, it's not quite as obvious at the knee, but if you look here at the hip, it's pretty clear that you can also see, as I change this hip flexion angle, the length of the muscle is not only changing, but the distance between the muscle and the center of that joint is changing. Sometimes it's pretty far from the center of the joint, and at other angles it's a lot closer to the center of that joint. Um, that distance there between the muscle's uh, line of action and the uh, center of rotation of that joint, that uh, perpendicular distance between those two things, is the moment arm of the muscle, or R down here. And so those muscle moment arms will also be functions of those joint angles. And it's those muscle moment arms that we will need here to compute the moments produced at the joints by those muscle forces. Um, so why, theoretically, are we doing these things? Why are we uh, going to define muscle lengths as functions of joint angles? And why are we going to define moment arms as functions of joint angles? Um, we're doing this because it's realistic. When we change angles of joints, this changes uh, lengths and moment arms of muscles. And we're also doing this because uh, we need to in our model. Um, in my hill-based muscle model, I need to know the length of the muscle so that I can compute the length of the SEC, which allows me to compute the force in the SEC. Um, I also need to then know the moment arm of the muscle force so that I can take that muscle force and convert it into a moment produced um, at the joint spanned by that muscle to actually use that force to uh, act on the joint and, and rotate the joint um, about that degree of freedom. Okay, um, let's get into a little bit of theory here on how we can relate these uh, functions for moment arms to these functions for uh, length of the muscle. And I'm just going to uh, type some text out here to, to hopefully make this clear uh, for you guys. Um, the reading for today for this material is uh, this Vanden Bogert uh, 2011 paper that I uploaded a week or two ago. Um, the relevant part for today is fairly short if you scroll down a few pages here. It's uh, section 2.4 here, muscle skeleton kinematic coupling. Um, here it's talking about relating the kinematics of the skeleton, specifically the angles of the joints, to the kinematics of the muscles crossing those joints, specifically the lengths and moment arms um, of the muscle. So let's suppose we have the length of the muscle defined as some function of the angles of the joints spanned by that muscle. And let's not worry about what this function is exactly just yet. It's some, some nebulous mathematical function. We'll, we'll worry specifically about defining the function a little bit later. Um, you'll notice here I keep saying uh, angles here, plural, where Q here could hypothetically be several joint angles. Um, in reality, the length of a muscle is determined by uh, multiple pieces of kinematic information about the skeleton. Um, in, like specifically, if you have, a, say, a muscle that uh, crosses two joints, both the hip joint and the knee joint, a biarticular muscle, then its length will be a function of both of those joint angles. Um, or at a, a joint that has uh, more than one degree of freedom, like the hip joint, which has uh, three degrees of rotational freedom, the, the length of the muscles that span that joint will be a, a function of all three of those uh, rotations, all three of the, of the hip angles in three dimensions. Um, but since our model is uh, two-dimensional, we just have uh, the joint flexion extension angles, and we're just going to have uh, uniarticular muscles in our model, just muscles that uh, only cross one joint. So our muscle lengths here will, will just be functions of one joint angle, the single um, angle of the single joint that they cross. But in reality here, in, in, in more complicated models and in, in real uh, human bodies, the, the lengths of muscles will depend on the angles of, of multiple joints or multiple pieces of angular kinematic information. So let's suppose here we have the length of some muscle defined as a function of the angle of the joint that that muscle crosses. Okay. Um, ideally, I want this function to be nice and smooth and continuous so that I can determine analytically and symbolically its partial derivative, the derivative 
of that function with respect to that joint angle Q. Now, why do I want that? Well, because it turns out that the moment arm for that muscle to that joint is also related to this derivative. In particular, the moment arm of this muscle to this joint is the negation of the partial derivative of that muscle length function with respect to that joint angle. So if I can determine a function here expressing my muscle length with respect to the angle of the joint, then I can do some simple math here and also determine a expression for my muscle moment arm as a function of the angle of that joint. Um, why is that necessarily the case? Well, it's due to this principle in biomechanics called virtual work. Now, what this virtual work principle means is let's go back to our, our definition of the moment at a joint equaling the moment arm of the muscle to that joint times the force produced by the muscle that's producing that moment. Now, suppose we apply this moment to the joint. And since we are applying it, it would be an external moment, so it would be a, a negative moment. Um, that moment is going to be due to these, excuse me, these uh, muscle forces here, this muscle force. Let's just consider a simple case here where we just have uh, one muscle producing this moment. Um, that moment will generally cause a change in the angle of the joint, and that will result in some work being done on that joint by that moment. And what will that work be? Well, it'll be the moment times the change in angle. Okay. Um, because that moment is produced by this force, the work done at the joint level has to also equal the work done at the muscle level. So the work done on the joint by changing the joint angle is also going to equal the work done on the muscle by changing the length of that muscle. Where remember here, as I change the angle of my joint, I'm also changing the length L of my muscle. Okay. So picture a moment here rotating this joint and changing the angle of that joint. That'll be associated with some work done on that joint, m times dq, which will also be associated with some work done by that muscle, f times dl. And because that uh, moment is being produced by that muscle force, and because that change in joint angle is mapping to certain change in muscle length, those two uh, works have to be equal to each other. The work done on the joint by the moment has to equal the uh, work done by the muscle force. Now, let's do a little bit of algebra here. Let's divide both sides here by dq. So I get negative m equals f times dl over dq. And let's move my minus sign to the other side. And let's go ahead and move my minus sign inside to my other term here. And I get that the internal moment at the joint equals the force produced by the muscle spanning that joint times the negative of the change in length with respect to the change in angle of the joint. Now, what does this equation look like? Well, it looks a heck of a lot like this equation up here. So, it turns out my muscle moment arm to that joint is just the negation of the partial derivative of the muscle length with respect to the uh, angle of that joint. Okay. So, that is the virtual work uh, principle in biomechanics relating muscle length kinematics to muscle moment arm kinematics. So if I have a symbolic expression for muscle length as a function of joint angle, I can, from that, derive fairly automatically an expression for uh, muscle moment arm as a function of joint angle. Okay, um, let's stop there, and next time we will get into actually
uh, defining these functions in MATLAB so that we can uh, move on and then move our hill muscle model over into MATLAB and produce uh, some muscle forces in response to muscle excitations and actually move the joints uh, of our model.